Hi everyone, it's Pat here from Scrivener Art and Design. Today I'm in my studio and I'm going to be working on this painting. Now I started this painting in a workshop that I was teaching and I didn't get as far along as I would have liked. It was an intuitive figure painting workshop and it was my second uh, demonstration painting and I just kind of I don't know what happened. Um, I think I was tired. I couldn't get into my own headspace. And I came home and looked at it and really realized that the scale of my bottom figure I wasn't happy with. As much as I like these two ghost figures kind of in the background up here, not sure that they're related enough to my subject being a musician. And I'm finding this. Um, lady on the side to be uh, kind of large and overpowering. So I'm going to make some changes and see how it goes. If you're enjoying my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps. And also, if you leave a comment, have a question, I'm happy to answer. Okay, let's get painting. So I'm changing the shape of the piano that is flattened and letting go of the figure that's standing in front of the piano. I felt that wasn't working. I'm using a Thalo turquoise straight out of the tube or jar in this case. It's a chroma paint from Granville Island in Vancouver. Now I'm using an ultramarine blue and I'm now enlarging this figure on the side. So you can see that I have chalked in my changes uh, that I'm going to try and this painting, if you stick with me and watch the video, you will see it takes many twists and turns before I'm finally happy with it. This happens sometimes when you're painting intuitively you don't have a photo reference to go by. Uh, you're kind of making the story up as you go. And sometimes it just doesn't fall out of your brush like it does other times. So the beauty of acrylic that I'm working in is that you can keep building up layers and it dries quickly so you can get back at it. Just putting in a little bit lighter color here to identify the faces more and the hands. So this kind of painting isn't once and done. It's about making lots of changes and tweaks and continuing on until you're satisfied. And sometimes it just takes a while. So here I'm enlarging the lower shape of this figure and putting in some shadow colors. So I've decided that the two ghost figures don't really belong in the story of musicians as much as I liked how they showed up. I am replacing them with a upright bass player. This is going to fill in that large space behind the piano player. So when I paint intuitively, which is most of the time, I need to really get into my own headspace. And to do that, um, I will do some meditation beforehand, some uh, chakra balancing, some stretching. And I either paint in total silence or I put on some very Zen type music. In this video, you'll probably see that I had some 
interruptions in my studio while I was painting and um, it looks like I was having a conversation and my lips don't uh, sync up with what I'm saying here when I'm narrating so pardon me it does look a little odd but I'm not uh, talking to myself and I'm not chewing gum I was just actually having a conversation with somebody that stopped into my studio. But generally speaking, I like a very quiet surrounding when I'm painting. This allows me to get into my head more and really listen to what the painting wants because I feel this kind of painting comes through me it's not something that I premeditate or sketch out. It's just what shows up as I start working. So you really need to have a quiet time and not have too much chatter going on in your head when you're doing this. I'm letting that far back figure, ghost-like figure, go out of the painting now. I do like to keep things in the painting as long as possible, but if they're not working, you know, you just have to let them go. I've decided to change the color of the dress over here. Uh, there's a lot of red in the background of the painting, so trying to bring a little bit of blue to this other side. And I've mixed the um, ultramarine blue, um, no, I think actually it's cerulean blue, or it could be a combination of the two that I've added some white to. And now I'm changing the color of the figure here behind as well, so there's more contrast with the upright base, because I am going to leave that more in the red and burgundy shade to have a contrast with the piano player. Scratching back in with the back of my brush. It's something that I often like to do just to put some energy back in the work. I'm giving her some teal hair, bring a little bit of that teal color over and putting a little bit on the saxophone, a little bit more on the piano player and again, some of that mixed tint of the cobalt blue. Adding some red in. This is cad red. It's fairly opaque. We've got some alizarin crimson on that side. Adding in some more highlights to give the base some dimension. Coming back in over her hair with some black paint and putting hair on the base player as well. And I managed to slip some green in there without pushing the record button. So adding some lime green made out of my palette colors of the blue and yellow just tends to uh, liven this up. The green is a complement to red so it gives it a nice little bit of juice. Just changing the top now bringing this figure in front. I didn't end up in love with that big flat piano shape. It just seemed very dominant in my painting. So going back to having a figure in the front Like I said, this painting takes a lot of twists and turns before it really felt like it came together. What I'm showing you is really such a Reader's Digest condensed version of the painting. Um, I've got the video down to 20 minutes and uh, it certainly 
took me much longer to do than that. So don't be discouraged if you're doing a painting and it's not coming together as quick as you like. And don't be afraid to put it aside and hang it somewhere else out of your studio where it's not as um, maybe busy and where you're not overstimulated. I like to bring mine in to the house and look at them on a wall or look at them maybe when I'm eating, when I'm not thinking about the painting and sometimes something will catch my eye and then I will make the changes on it. Uh, it's really good to ponder sometimes um, when you're near the end of your painting. So I've decided to change the hat here, just the position of it and the style of hat on the saxophone player. And again, just going in around the background, putting some more paint on. So for the background color, I like to keep a large tub of paint mixed and then I might modulate it uh, as I go, just changing it slightly. So in this case, I've grayed it down a little bit more than it was, just so it's not quite as intense and it allows the figures to pop out more. You can clean up some edges this way if you like as well. Now going back into the faces, bringing a bit of a neck down on this gal. When I'm working on a painting, I try and stick with the colors on my palette. And in this case, I've mixed my flesh tones out of the red and the yellow and adding white to it to make various shades of pink and peachy tones rather than grabbing a skin tone color out of the tube I like to mix something so that it works with the painting and the colors it keeps things much more harmonious than if you grab colors that are pre-mixed coming back in the hat now I am painting it green but this is just the underpainting, and I like doing that in, to show a little bit of it peeking through. Now, maybe at the time I thought I would leave it green, but you'll see as I continue that I definitely change that. So just popping in a bit more green in places and Every time you add a little bit more paint, it can get a little thicker and a little more interesting. So I like to have thick paint on my work. I don't like seeing the canvas. It does help also if you put extra gesso on the canvas before you start to um, eliminate that canvas roughness and make it a brighter white so adding a layer or two of gesso and sanding in between so you have a nice bright white smooth surface can really enhance your painting as well now i don't always take the time to do that but uh, i think it is a good idea especially if you bought less expensive canvases that uh, are more student grade, often the gesso on them is not very bright at all and it's usually a skimpy coat. So I would recommend doing that before you get started. Now I've got a small rigger brush here and I'm bringing some red paint in and around some of the edges just to connect the red in other places of my painting. So again, not trying to outline, but just adding little bits here and there, sometimes softening it with my fingers.
So I like having these little bits of color in other places. I really find it, it makes a difference to the painting. Putting a little bit of detail in his hand. Now coming back in and painting his hat a darker value. So many changes along the way. Here I'm using a little Martha Stewart sponge stamp and putting in some round dots on the saxophone and coming back in with some lighter blue. So you really want to take the time to check your values and a good way to do that is to use a app a value app on your phone or switch it to black and white so you can really see where you're sitting on the value scale. You want to have a broader range. You don't want all the values to be sitting in the middle and color can really fool our eye. So I really recommend you do look at the painting throughout the duration of you working on it check your values and uh, a lot of times that can be the problem so i'm coming in here on the keyboard or the piano with um, a small flat brush and putting in the black keys so i'm just really eyeballing this i'm not measuring or anything it's just very um random and I don't want um, that to be my focus which your focal point is where your highest contrast of value is so I am going to take that down a bit when it dries so here I've chalked in just with chalkboard chalk my strings and I'm using a Posca pen to paint them on and now I'm coming in on the keyboard, um, putting in some black lines with the Posca pen. And again, just very random. I don't want this to be absolutely perfect and realistic, just to give the idea. And I am going to um, blur that out a little bit as well so it's not as dominant. So just using my finger and applying some paint over top just to blend it out and make it pushed back looking so it's not as dominant because I don't really want the eye to just settle on that area. So lots of considerations and uh, adjustments along the way. This painting was much more of a challenge for me than a lot of them but I think I'm coming near the end of what I'm going to do on it for now and um, just putting in a little brighter color here on this arm widening it out at the top on this one a bit and adding a little bit more thick paint onto the base coming in around his head. So now I have an orange pastel and it's a chalk pastel so this will have to be sealed before I put as a coat of varnish on. So this is going to be the last thing I do uh, for now in the painting. I hope that you have enjoyed the video and I invite you to leave comments and ask questions. I'm always happy to uh, answer them and I look forward to sharing more of my paintings in progress with you. And if you have any ideas for videos that you would like, please let me know. I'd be happy to consider um, making a video to help you along your art journey. So at this point I'm just really 
fiddling and finessing uh, and you have to be careful that you don't overdo it now when you're close to the end. <laughs>